Finally happening, he's on the move, and Juve is his destination, as per all the biggest sources in Italy. Just how much of an impact do you think he's going to have there, Don? No, oh, he's an incredible player, Kay. Honestly, I mean, honestly, if you, if you, if you put him and Haaland together and they're stylistically more or less the same, they're big, they're strong, they're powerful, they run off the ball, they're good finishers, they're great in the air, they tick a lot of similar boxes. He's got confidence, he's got arrogance, and I think his destination was to always end up at Juve. I didn't really buy the interest or the serious interest from Arsenal. I never really thought he wanted to come to the Premier League. I think he was maybe holding out towards the end of the season to see if he maybe one of the English clubs got in the top four in the Champions League spots. But I felt as though he wanted to go to Juve uh, and work under Max Allegri, Allegri and, and, and play for that black and white jersey. And I think he's going to be a superstar. He is at 21. Again, you talk about Haaland and how much room he's got to grow and he's nowhere near his prime. He's, what, seven, eight years away from his prime. He's a brilliant footballer to watch with a brilliant attitude. Uh, so, obviously, as you mentioned, top four. Will he solve Juventus's problems in the short term in making sure that they do make it into the top four by the end of the season? He's going to have to, Kay, um, because Juve, probably three months ago, were nowhere near the top four. They were a mile away from top spot. Uh, all the teams like Inter, Napoli and AC Milan were going well away from Juve. So, they've recovered lately. They've put some decent results together. I think for, for Juve now, it's all about finishing the top four. They're, they're, they're not going to win the title. They're a million miles off that. Even though when you look at where they are in the league, performances have not warranted them being anywhere near top spot. So I think, uh, and it sounds a little bit sad because the state of Juve in at the moment and the finances at the football club, a success for them this season would be a Champions League spot. And the knock-on effect seems to be, could be, Alvaro Morata going to Barcelona, Sid. But it does appear... There are a fair few ob obstacles in the way. <laughs> uh, we've spent a very long time now, haven't we, talking about the obstacles in the way of Barcelona signing people. That every time a name comes up, we, we always preface it by saying, yes, but in order for that to happen, they need to move people on. They need to find a way of reducing the, the, the salary limits or rather reducing the, the, the cost of the, the, the squad and, and getting within that salary limit so that they can sign people. In, this, you know, there's a, there's a long-term problem for Barcelona financially, but there's a short-term mechanical problem, which is getting people through that criteria. And so right now they're in a position where they know, and Alvaro Morata knows, that it's very, very, very difficult to sign. At the moment, they can't. Things have to shift for that to happen. And of course, this brings us back to that familiar name that we've been talking about for weeks now, Usman Dembele, and what they ha what they are able to do with his contract. And right now, they've said that if he doesn't stay, if in other words, if he doesn't sign a new deal, which would enable them to move his salary further back, to move things on, and therefore release some, some salary now, then they want him to go and they want him to go right away. But as he said in that extraordinary letter last week, he will not be blackmailed. Although he did also say that love is the greatest blackmail of all. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually part of what we're going to get to with Usman Dembele because it does feel as though it's all linked, doesn't it? Okay. As for Alvaro Morata to Barcelona, Xavi wants him. The uh -huh. player wants to go. What do you think he could bring to Barcelona? An able body with a pulse inside the 18-yard box. Which Barcelona, let me tell you, <laughs> when they're trying to find an able body with a pulse, they've turned to Luke de Jong. And for the longest time, Barcelona fans were screaming and yelling, how can it be that Luke de Jong is actually a Barcelona player? And for the last three weeks, it's like, we have to have Luke de Jong on the field. Because now we're swinging balls into the box, and that's what he's going to bring for us, a guy who can finish a chance. The desperation right now from Barcelona fans in going from one end of the spectrum to the other, it's happening so very quickly. And it happens because you're not getting the results that you want. And in that desperation, you end up making the wrong decisions. I suppose that Alvaro Morata, in fact, I know that Alvaro Morata at this point in his career is an upgrade to Luke de Jong and gives this team more variety in ways to attack in the final third, more movement of the ball, which Barcelona needs out of that number nine position. So I suppose that this would be a good move for Barcelona, but it's also chasing goals. It's also chasing goals that are not coming from anywhere. It's not like Alvaro Morata was killing it and said, yeah, there's a reason as to why Juventus is saying, yeah, go ahead. You go, you go on and take Alvaro Morata. There's a reason as to why this is happening. 
But is it an upgrade to Luke de Jong? The answer is yes. But that's what makes it so interesting, what you say about Serie A, because you, you know that that's the feeling there, that, OK, he's all right, uh, Chelsea and the Premier League, everybody not too sold on the idea of him. But it seems as though it's different in Spain, Sid. How is he actually rated back in Spain? Well, actually, you know what? Funnily enough, Kay, as you were going through that catalogue of clubs that he's played for and the catalogue of, of fan reaction that says, yeah, he, he's kind of quite good, but we're not entirely sure about him. And, and that very much, a, he's very much a yeah, but player, isn't he? He's a player that if you look at the, the qualities, you think he's, he's got it all, but we're not sure if he's always got it all. He has those runs where he's absolutely brilliant. And then, and then he sort of disappears from it. And you look at him, I, I think from an emotional point of view sometimes, and you, and you wonder um, about the, if you like the mental toughness and so on. But, but you've just said, is it different in Spain? Well, here's the thing that's been missed off that list. Alvaro Morata officially belongs to Atletico Madrid. There's a reason why he's in Italy. And he's partly in Italy because Atletico Madrid reached that same sort of conclusion that you're talking about. That same conclusion that said, yeah, we, we like him. And actually, to be fair to him, when they came back from lockdown, for example, I thought he played really, really well for those last, was it 11 games, I think, after lockdown. And there were signs there that this could work and that maybe if Simeone could reach him. But I think one of the things about Morata throughout his career is there's always been that sense of... Somewhere along the line, he is chasing, whether it's a kind of a happiness or a comfort or a sense of belonging that never quite happens. And we've seen it two different periods at Juventus. We've seen it him turning up at Atletico Madrid and then moving on, going to Chelsea and feeling like, wow, this is it. Oh, maybe it's not. And so I think that would be the doubt for Barcelona, that if you look at it as a checklist of qualities, he's got a lot of them. And this would be a reasonably good deal. But as you say, it's coming from a Juventus club that doesn't necessarily see a big problem in him going. He's at Juventus because Atletico Madrid didn't see a particularly big problem in him going. He went back to Atletico, he went to Atletico Madrid, back to Spain, because Chelsea weren't sure that there was a big problem in him going. And so on. And so that's where the doubts will come. And I say all of this, by the way, as someone who watches him play and quite often thinks, this guy's brilliant. Or maybe, more accurately, this guy could be brilliant. No, yeah, so maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Listen, one thing we do know for sure is that um, Adama Traore is going to Barcelona on loan with a buy option. So what does this mean for Dembele? Yeah, we're just seeing the papers here with him on the front pages. Now, Sid, you, you did touch on this with what we saw last week, but we've seen some conflict in reports now. Some saying that he actually wants to stay. Obviously, you mentioned the others. You mentioned the letter that we saw. We saw the quotes from Barcelona as well. Has there been any updates? What is the latest? Yeah, there has been. Um, and in a way, it, it changes things a bit, but I'm reluctant to go too far with this because what we've been told is there was a meeting directly with Xavi and Dembélé's agents um, in which... It was reaffirmed to Xavi, yes, Dembélé is committed to the project, yes, he would like to stay, but of course there are some obstacles still and those obstacles are fundamentally financial. Now, that is a step again because of course that suggests a reopening at the very least of talks off the back of a period last week in which the club said, go in which Dembélé responded by saying, I won't be blackmailed. Now, even if I won't be blackmailed and saying, I am committed to the project and I will give everything and I'm here for my manager and I'm here for my club, even if that suggests, look, you can play me, look, I can be useful, look, I can continue at the club. Of course, at no point did he say, and by the way, I want to continue at the club, not publicly. And of course, if you use the word blackmail about the way your club is treating you, that tends not to end particularly well. So this is a shift in that it feels like a reopening of negotiations at a time when Barcelona had said, right, that's it, it's done, it's over. So that's significant. In terms of the actual position of Dembélé, well, this is what Xavi had already said, both publicly and privately. Dembélé tells me he wants to stay. But that doesn't mean it will happen because they're actually, the, the, if you like, the final objectives of club and player in economic terms are still some way off. So the position really is that we don't know. The position is in theory, Barcelona are saying, well, in theory, no, in practice, they are saying whether or not they'll follow through with it is another thing. If you do not go now and you do not renew, you will sit in the stands. And here's the thing, Kate, this is part, I think, and I'm risking reading between the lines too much here, but I think this is part, I think, of the arrival of Adama Traore. This is partly saying to Dembélé, we've got this guy, we don't need you. You really will be sitting in the stands if you do not renew your contract with us. Do you think it's fair to be reading between the lines there, though, Ale? 
you can read between the lines all you want and Sid can do that as well as anybody, but all I would say is take away the uh, blackmail, take away the negotiations or lack thereof, take away all that stuff, put that to the side. Let's evaluate the player. If you're a Barcelona and part of the front office or Barcelona, evaluate the player. Has he been the player that you thought he would be for you? Has he been as productive as you thought he would be for you? Has he developed the way that you thought that he would? And he, are you, as you project forward, based upon the evidence that you've had with this player over the last few years, then is he going to be what you think he can be? The answer to that on the evidence that we have is very clear. There is no place for yeah. Barcelona on chasing down Usmane Dembele and spending a whole chunk of money that you don't have and that you're struggling to come up with for a guy who hasn't been nearly as productive as you thought he would be. He has not been the player they were getting and they were hoping for. And so why, oh why, when you have a chance to move on with life and go find an answer somewhere else, would you go chase this guy? Again, Take away the blackmail, take away the negotiations, take away the conversations, and let's just evaluate the performance. Has this guy been good enough for you? The answer is no. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.